Starting the coffee with the K-Bar Chopsticks of Truth using the Vortex Method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee. At the molecular level, good morning, welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee from the Evermore Coffee Roasters in, uh, should I say, is it Burlington? Burlington, New Jersey. This is Guatemala La Montanita, medium roast. The notes are milk chocolate, vanilla, and apple. Evermore Coffee Company. That's a gift from my client friend, Ivan, who brought me that bag yesterday. So let's give this a shot. Yeah. Milk, chocolate, vanilla. This is not flavored coffee. These are the notes that the actual bean itself is producing. An apple. I'm not getting the apple thing. I'm not getting the apple. Milk, chocolate, and vanilla, yes. Apple, maybe not yet. Boy, that's good. I don't know if they send their coffee beans out, or you just have to get them in person there, but well done, guys. Perfectly roasted. Really love it. And thank you, Ivan, for the coffee. Appreciate that. Single topic daybreak show today, and that is loneliness and cancer in men. Why is this important? I think as people get older, they tend to see the relationship between their relationship with people, with society, and illness. Are you a stress causer or a stress reliever in people's life? Are you savage or are you a truth teller? And is the truth just a pow kind of element or is it truth wrapped in love? There's a in Ephesians 4 talks about speaking the truth in love. There's a way to deliver truth that's not damaging. There's a way to deliver truth that's redemptive. And as you get older, you start to realize how important it is, if you think that you're going to be a truth teller, or a savage, or whatever the hell you want to call it, that you do it in love. Let's talk about loneliness and how it can affect you. And is that loneliness because of you isolating yourself or have you been isolated? One of the things that I've experienced, I'd say in the past 20 years, is how men have isolated themselves because they just gave up on society after divorce, after breakups. They said, out oh, of hell with everything. You know, the hell with women, the hell with working the corporate world, the hell with society, the hell with cities. Like, there's a lot of things you want to distance yourself from. And maybe the problem is you, possibly. I'm not saying it always is. Is the problem you or is it really that thing? Is your picker, you know, that part inside your heart and mind that picks things, is that a little bit off? Did you make the wrong choice in women because you picked the wrong woman and then now all women are bad because you made a bad choice? There's entire communities of men that are just anti-woman, anti-marriage, because of mistakes they made. Now, I'm not letting women off the hook. Every, or I should say each gender, has to take responsibility for itself at the macro level. Let's go down to the micro level. You and me. Where are your decisions, good and bad? Very rarely do people usually get T-boned in relationships, whether they be intimate relationships or social relationships. If you take full responsibility, as what Jen Molesky, Jennifer Molesky says, she called herself an anti-victocrat. In other words, I'm an anti-victim. I take full responsibility for myself. I like that. Boy, that resonated with me. But let's talk about your loneliness and your health and the disease that you have in your body. Loneliness, I'm just going to read a little bit here. Loneliness amongst middle-aged men can pose a risk of cancer. This finding comes from a study involving 2,500 middle-aged men whose health has been monitored since enrolling in the study in the 1980s. Researchers have reported that about 25% of men developed cancer, 
and 283 of them have died. The team found that loneliness increased the risk of developing cancer by 10% and was seen regardless of a man's age, socioeconomic status, lifestyle, sleep quality, symptoms of depression, body mass index, and heart disease. The researchers also found that cancer deaths were higher among men who were unmarried, widowed, or divorced. Holy crap, that's something the men's community has never, ever addressed. Let me read that again. Deaths were higher, cancer deaths were higher among men who were unmarried, widowed, or divorced. What has the men's community done about that? I think the men's community has done more to hurt men than to help them. When I look at social media, I see men hammering other men, not building other men up. And I was part of that for a while, and I disavow my involvement in that, the savageness, putting other people down. You know what? I'm not interested in that. I, I had to walk away from that. I don't enjoy that. And some of you just watch video after video of men hammering the fuck out of other men. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. I'm pro-men, but 90% of my work is hammering other men. You know what? You're part of the problem, not part of the solution. Cancer deaths were higher among men who were unmarried, widowed, or divorced. Damn. Damn. Holy cow. What if, what if you had an actual ministry, a service to men, if you are a leader in the men's ministry, men's, men's community, the YouTube men's community? What if you had a purpose that was focused towards unmarried, widowed, and divorced, rather than promoting and perpetuating the despair and the bullshit bring hope, positivity, and optimism. Instead of bringing your own damaged, broken bullshit into other people's lives, be a messenger of sanity, clarity, and reason amongst men, even to the worst. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, I work with men. In my career, I've worked with a lot of men, not just, not just men. I've worked with men and women and children. And one of the things that I have done is dealt with d the despair of men. And I've worked with men who've done some pretty bad things, especially in the criminal justice system. Really, really bad things. Really bad things. Guys who deserve to be locked up and the key thrown away. Those kind of guys. Guys that need to be in solitary confinement. Guys that probably deserve the ultimate penalty. But one of the things that I have done, I honestly believe this, I do believe that justice and mercy go hand in hand. When I've worked with people in the criminal justice system, with men, justice has already been done. Juries and judges have already imposed a sentence. I can't make that sentence any worse. So my job is to extend mercy to them. And in my work, I've had two men, two men, not a lot, two men who did some really, really bad things, ba bad stuff, murder, just really mass murder, to be exact, who've been in prison for, one's been in prison for over 40 years, one's been in prison for over 30 years. And they look forward to seeing me. I'm not just neutral with them. I extend mercy to them. Justice has already been done. They're never going to see the light of day. So I extend mercy and might to them and smile. And when no one else will shake their hand, because those hands murdered people, I reach out my hand. Now, I'm not condoning what they did. I am pro-victim. I feel bad for the families and the people who were affected by the crime. I do. And these guys deserve every bit of the sentence, even more. But here's the thing. 
extending mercy and light to people who don't deserve it. Holy crap. Holy crap. That's one of the hardest things in the world to do. The hardest things. I'm a big believer in, you know, you do the crime, you do the time. That's it. And then the slate is wiped clean. That's what I believe. Some of you might not believe in that. But check this out. Cancer deaths were higher amongst men who were unmarried, widowed, or divorced. Damn. Those three things there are never taken into consideration. Never. I would even say the incarcerated, too. Let's add number four to that. Let's say unmarried, widowed, divorced, or incarcerated. Long-term incarcerated. Researchers uh, noted that awareness of the health effects of loneliness is constantly increasing and therefore it is important to examine in more detail the mechanisms by which loneliness causes adverse health effects which would enable us to better alleviate loneliness and the harm caused by it. Why promote loneliness? Why impose sentences on people that are only going to lead to poor health, even if they deserve it. There's a lot of people who impose those sentences on themselves. You don't have to, you know, I always say first do no harm and secondly do only good to yourself when you're going through a breakup, when you've gone through a divorce. How many guys that are divorced just damage themselves, one layer of damage after another in addition to the hurt from the divorce. Think about that. You drink, you do drugs, you have a revolving door in your bedroom. You're just doing more damage to yourself. You don't reward yourself by drinking yourself to sleep, by getting high, by having just like woman after woman in your bed. That's not a reward. That's actually doing more damage to yourself. Although it feels good while it's happening. You still have the issue when you wake up the next day. When you have to kick the broad out of the bedroom, Farmer game, I used to call it. Oh, I got to get up early, so you got to go. You're hurting yourself. But do you want to be involved in hurting others, other men? Women will protect other women. I've never seen anything like it. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Candace Owens. I think she's a big user. I think she's riding a wave of popularity now because she's a woman, because she's a woman of color, because she's conservative, which whatever the hell that means. We don't even know what that means anymore, conservative. And I expressed my disapproval in her recently, and all these people like got mad at me. Mostly women and feminine men. And I'm like, well, why do you like her? Just because she's a woman? Just because she's a woman of color? Just because she's a conservative? Or calls herself a conservative? I don't want to get played anymore. I'm not interested in getting played. The lesson from that is, is that is that women will protect women. It, you've seen that happen over and over again. Men will throw each other under the bus like you have no idea. Men will beat the crap. Men will kick each other while they're down. You know, like kick a man when he's down? I see that happening all the time. And if he's not down, I'll bring him down, and then I'll kick him. I say... Be careful of what you do because the stuff you do will come back to you. You want to call it karma. You want to call it what goes around comes around. You want to, I just call it you reap what you sow. You don't have to do anything. A lot of times people's, uh, the world, the cosmos, God, the Lord, is not going to be mocked. It's like jumping off a cliff and then halfway down, God, save me. Mm. He could, but gravity is going to still have its effect on you. You made the decision and then ask God to save you after you are experiencing the consequences of that bad decision? Come on. Also, too, I like to say to people that God forgives, but consequences don't. God will forgive you for what you've done, of course, absolutely. But the consequences still exist. Let's continue this. 
Loneliness. Loneliness can be prevented in your own life by making the proper decisions for fellowship, by being around people. There have been times where I'm like, ah, I just don't want to go. I don't feel like going there. And then you force yourself to go, and then you say to yourself, boy, I, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I went out. I'm glad I did this or did that. When staying at home and Netflixing and eat, eating half a pizza and six beers would have been what you would have done if you didn't go out. And just a little bit of human interaction was good for you. Remember, for the hurting man, first, do no harm. Secondly, do only good to yourself. You don't reward yourself by eating garbage, getting high, having women in your bedroom. Re Why don't we reward ourselves with positive things? You heard me talk about this five years ago. Some of you old heads remember me saying this. Why do we reward ourselves with gluttony and things that are bad for us? You never see anyone saying, I'm going to reward myself with a salad. It's always like some indulgent thing that's going to like raise your blood sugar, make you fat, give you a sugar crash and make you feel like shit, right? Why, does our, why do our reward systems tend to be more negative, indulgent? Just a thought. Dr. Weil says you can eat as much salmon and broccoli as you like, take antioxidants on a regular basis, breathe deeply, exercise daily, but if you are disconnected, you will find it difficult to achieve optimum health. If you think that connectedness is equal to being active on the internet, or I should say being active on the internet and shit talking and twittering and YouTubing and whatever, doing whatever on social media, which is the new form of socialization, if you think that is equal to actually sitting down with people on a regular basis, you're wrong. You're still disconnected. I don't care. There's people watching me right now whose life revolves around social media and checking messages and push notifications. That is not being connected. You are going to be one of the 10% that develops an illness, a maladaptive response to disconnectedness. If all your socialization is on social media, which many people it is, you're going to have a short life and things are going to start going wrong. You know how you're supposed to live? I love what Dr. Weil says. You live a long life and then you succumb to the rapid onset of age-related conditions. For instance, uh, he talked about his mother who lived to be in her 90s and then she just started failing and died. That's what we used to call, now you don't hear this anymore, what did, what did grandma or grandpa die of? Oh, they died of old age. And you're like, okay, and you accepted that. When was the last time you heard of someone dying of old age? Now everybody dies of a disease, something they caught, right? You live until your body wears out and then you go fast. You don't suffer the last 20 years of your life and start fizzling out. What a great way to live. You want to live longer? Be connected with people. Dr. Weil talked about this. He lived in Arizona in the desert want to escape from everybody. And there's a movement. I want to move out to the country. I want a homestead. Okay, that's cool. I don't want to be around people. I want to be out of, away from the city. I agree with that. But the key is this. Not getting away from people. It's getting away from the wrong people. The users, the negative ones, the insane ones, the troublemakers, the stressy people. I posted something on Facebook today where I said... Uh, on my Facebook pay, uh, professional page. Let me find this for you. I'm convinced that people's stress is as toxic as the junk we put into our bodies. In the same way you clean up your diet by eliminating the wrong foods, clean up your associations with the wrong people, the stressy people. You don't benefit from junk food or junk people. Do a people elimination diet, and you'll feel better almost immediately. It's like when people said, as soon as I stopped using sugar, I felt better. As soon as I eliminated X, like whatever X is, they started feeling better. Many times it's only one thing that you need to eliminate or add to improve your life. The answer to too much people stress is not to move out in the country. I need to get out of the city. 
Dr. Weil did that. And then he found out that he was getting disconnected. So he moved back into town and would go to a coffee shop in the morning and read the newspaper and hang out with other old men and talk about women and dogs and trucks and life and the weather and stuff. And there was a connectedness. They could care less if he was Dr. Weil. He was just one of the guys at the coffee shop. Connectedness is good and it gives you a long life. Disconnectedness shortens your life and creates illness in you. Like, I'm sore today, very sore. I worked out yesterday in the sun. This is that time of year where uh, you know, I get out of work and it's still sunshine and I do a complete workout on the back deck with dumbbells, got a good pump going. All I'm wearing is shorts, no shirt, no shoes, nothing, just on the deck, full body workout. I feel like today that I, I got hit by a train. It's that good pain. I feel good. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it hurts so good. I did a goblet squats yesterday and on the way down, like where your elbows touch your knees and your butt is only a couple inches off the ground. I literally, my legs are in such pain. My butt is in such pain right now, but it hurts so good. The pain that you feel from people is not good. It's to, it's to be avoided. Workout pain, good. People pain, bad. But why do you keep going back to it? What is that sick part of you that keeps getting drawn to people who abuse the shit out of you? Get away, make the break, even if it's family. You remember my video from a couple weeks ago, how to cut ties with people. There's wisdom in that. I can't believe how fast that video grew. And I wasn't being savage or, you know, cold hard truth man. I try to speak with grace and speak the truth in love. Back to the issue, loneliness and cancer in men. Are you lonely and disconnected? Are there people who are disconnecting you? You stop your disconnecting of people and you stop being disconnected from people. Speak the truth in love or don't speak it at all. That's number one. The other thing is this. When you are alone, it is harder. One of the things that you try to tell yourself is, I want to be alone. I do better when I'm alone. You'll do better when you're with the right people, whether it be friends or lovers or the proper type of intimacy. I think about the lyrics from Tina Vaughn, who I play her song at the end of the videos in the past month or two. Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to put one foot in front of the other. So far as the echo, where do we start? You can learn to discover a million stars. Here in the shadows, I know you're scared. Take my hand together, we'll make a stand. We've got to fight to find a way, dare to fall, to find the words to say, no more hate. Just admit that you're afraid. Time to let go of all your fears and pride. Stand up beside me, don't you hide. We can build a better place if we can just find a way. Then we can live a better day. Rise from the ashes, from the anger, from the war. Let's come together, lift your spirit for the cause. We should be equal, we should be living free. All together, one and all, let's build a dream. No more hate, just admit you're afraid. Time to let go of your fear and pride. Stand up beside me, don't you hide. Powerful stuff. I'm still trying to get Tina on the channel here to sing that for us live. But the song has resonated with so many people to the point where I can't not have that be the theme song for the end of this season of the Daybreak Show. Loneliness and cancer. Let me just say loneliness and sickness in men. Are you hanging out with people who are creating loneliness and isolating you? Are you isolating people? What are you doing to fight that type of sickness? Social media is not socialization. You need socialization. And with that, 
finish your coffee, and I'll see you next week on the Daybreak Show. I will be doing a daily Daybreak Show. i got to figure out what platform I'm going to be on, whether it be Patreon or whatever. But right now, the Daybreak Show will be once a week. It will be daily from the Daybreak Studio, from a new platform, when I figure out when and where that's going to be. Because I know many of you miss the Daybreak Show, and I miss the Daybreak Show. It is my calling in life. Finish your coffee, and I'll see you next week on The Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard To put one foot in front of the other ah, So far is the echo, where do we start? You can learn to discover a million stars here in the shadows, I know you're scared Take my hand together, we'll make a stand We've got to fight to find a way Dare to fall to find our words to say No more hate Just admit that you're just a Better day